we have all done this, raising the saturation to ridiculous levels in an attempt to make the colors pop. Especially as a beginner, this might look good to you, but in reality it's a dead giveaway, the image was edited by an amateur. So with this video, I want to show you a few alternatives to just plain raising the saturation slider. By the way, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. In general, there is nothing wrong with using the saturation slider. The trick is to keep it subtle though. I rarely go above 10 for my landscape shots. If I want to make the whole image more colorful, I very much prefer the vibrant slider however. At a first glance, they appear to be doing the same thing, but there's a major difference. While the saturation slider adjusts the intensity of all the colors equally, Vibrance avoids increasing the color intensity of the most saturated areas. Plus, it also tries to protect skin tones if you're working on portrait shots for example. Although Vibrance is way more gentle on the image, you're still adjusting the colors globally with this slider. The secret for great colors however is to target them in a more precise way by using masks and the HSL settings. Let's say we want to make those green tones back there in the forest in the distance a little richer. We can head into the masks panel and here let's create a new color range mask. With the masks eyedropper, click somewhere in the forest. And that's how you can easily target the color you want to adjust. You can further refine the selection by making use of that slider right here, expanding or contradicting the selected color range. Or you can even hold down shift and just click somewhere else in the image to expand this mask selection. However, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo this change just so we get back our small little forest selection like this. With this selection right here, we can now nicely push the saturation slider without affecting the rest of the image. And we can further tweak it by adjusting the hue or the temperature if you want. Of course, this is not limited to the color range mask only. You can use every other mask for adjusting the colors of an image. In this case, the color range mask was just the easiest way to target the forest. To target the sky, as another example, we could use the linear gradient or simply go with the select sky mask. And here, maybe let's just bring down the saturation a bit since this area is a bit too vibrant. That looks much better this way. You see, the mask you want to use is highly dependent on the shape, brightness or color of an area. The other way to nicely adjust the saturation of a specific color is the HSL tool. Here you're able to change the hue, saturation and luminance of each color tone. This means if you want to push the intensity of those green tones in the forest, we simply switch to the saturation tab and bring up the green slider. As this area not only consists of green tones but also yellow, we can bring up that slider as well if you want to make the colors in there a little more intense. And while pushing these sliders, just keep in mind, again you want to keep it subtle, don't overdo it. And at the same time we can work on all the other color tones, which means, for example, we could just bring down orange, red, purple and magenta, just to desaturate the image in a subtle way and thus just get a more pleasing look on our image. Let's also bring down the aqua tones, this will desaturate the sky even further and thus we are just getting some more natural looking white colored clouds. And instead we could bring up the blue tones just a little bit to make the blue part of the sky a little bluer. Alright, and that is it for today's Lightroom tutorial. As you can see, this way we got way better saturation results using something like masks or the HSL settings to locally target the colors, instead of globally changing them through the saturation slider. Changing things locally in a way like this will make the editing process longer but in the end, it will make your images look way more professional. This not only counts for saturation and colors, but for everything you want to adjust. 
That's why local adjustments are so hugely important when editing landscape shots. I hope you were able to learn something new from this video. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you guys for watching this video.